Good afternoon, friends. You're welcome to your presentation on 5S Part 1, covering Seiri, a Japanese thinking and practice, by the ABK AOT Sukai Tamil Nadu Center, represented by me, Ranganathan, the founder chairman. ABK AOT Sukai Tamil Nadu Center is a linguistic, cultural, technical, and bilingual trade bridge between Japan and India. Now, it's Japanese thinking that I will be presenting. Uh, I'm the founder chairman, as I told you, and uh, I'm a Japanese Emperor Award winner in Order of the Rising Sun, Golden and Silver Race in 2005. I'm also winner of the AOTS Golden Jubilee Cultural Exchange Grand Prize in 2009. I had the privilege of receiving on behalf of the National Federation, the AOTS Alumni Association, as their president when our former uh, Prime Minister of Japan, Abe Shinsho, was uh, in New Delhi. And these are the pictures that you see. Now, we are marching into 2025, which is our Golden Jubilee year. Uh, you can see the first letter that we received approving us to start the center. And uh, you can see the first old team, which is behind it. This is taken in Kanimara Hotel. I am Ranganathan, the dark colored guy on the right hand side with the white shirt, white pad. Along with the, me, you can see at the center, my friend Kumagai. He was my teacher, my friend, philosopher, guide. And today, if we as the AOTS alumni are in existence here, he is one of the main reasons along with Mr. Ogito, the Director General of the ABK. Asia Bunga Kaika, Asian Cultural Center. Along with me and Mr. Kumagai, and others in the picture, is the, in the front is Emma Selvaraj. He was also a colleague of mine and an ex-member and past president of Dosokai. At the back, you have Mr. Seth Madhavan in a uh, check t-shirt, Mr. Ramakrishnan with a tie, both a past president. On the next to Mr. Ramakrishnan is V.A. Rambadra, his father, his grandfather was a very famous uh, uh, Kannada laureate, Mr. Masti Vengate Sainga. And then last is Mr. Murakami, who was a businessman in Chennai at that time. This is our first alumni meet to discuss about starting Dosoka in Chennai. And then we sent the request and immediately ABK responded to me, permitting me to start the center, even before the letter was given from the March 75. So next year, we are planning our Golden Jubilee celebration in the month of March, on March 8th. Now, we also received a number of uh, other awards. The other guys, my colleagues who have been there, you can see I am there with the uh, uh, Japanese uh, Consul General's uh, commendation. And then you can see our uh, past president, Chandra Mohan, and then uh, the current president, Sriram, both receiving commendation from uh, the Consul General. And then we have also received the Foreign Minister's uh, commendation for the ABK out here, Dosokai. And Mr. Chandra Mohan also received a Foreign Minister's commendation. We have received a number of uh, awards uh, from Japan as an organization. And definitely, we are very competent as practicing uh, five s guys. Our Vice Chairman, or Deputy, uh, uh, our Vice President, Mr. Mukundan has uh, been heading our fibers uh, uh, operations and uh, he is responsible for having the annual fibers convention award function in Chennai every year. So that is a small team that is there. And then, of course, I went to Japan in the year 1972 for a training in port construction with a company called Towa Ko and Kinsetsu, Towa Aba Works. And then uh, uh, later, after nearly eight years, I went for my production management in Japan and I had a great uh, opportunity of studying under Professor Murata. And uh, Professor Murata is still a wonderful professor, still teaching uh, with his own uh, consultancy agency. <laughs> and then I went for my total quality management training under great teachers like Toshio Kondo and Teichi Ando. Uh, both I brought to Chennai for uh, lectures. Then, of course, I had the 
golden opportunity to meet the father of uh, the quality circles movement in Japan, Kaur Ishikawa Sensei. And, and I tried to bring him also to Chennai, but his uh, age was one thing that didn't allow him to uh, travel. So that's something that uh, uh, we couldn't do. And then we are now with a small background that we are a very competent organization to talk about uh, the and of course, uh, Mr. Mukundan and uh, Dr. Balakrishna of our organization have been going on training. But however, I thought I will share uh, the Japanese thinking and uh, that have gone behind uh, this um, PIVAS, uh, which today has been changed a little bit uh, by the Western Americans. And the theory has become something else. So I would like to retain the original Japanese flavor in this presentation. So Seiri is the first step to climb into Fiverr's ladder. Now, if you, I just want to introduce you to a uh, very nice book written by a beautiful lady whom you are seeing there. Uh, she is called uh, Mario Kondo, a Japanese organizing consultant. She wrote a book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, The Japanese Art of Decluttering and Organizing. As you may be aware, because I also lived there. The Japanese are really obsessed with the details and comfort of the small homes. I also had a small home. And then uh, we have forcibly to have to keep our houses neat and clean. So the small house is a catalyst for our interest in tidying up, providing some sort of a creative story and solution, which will help in space saving. Tidying gives you an extra space, which is certainly a premium in Japan. And Japanese often cite the old saying that goes, Tetsu Tori Hato Nigutsu. Uh, it is a foolish bird that spoils the beauty of its own nest. Now, I am presenting my PowerPoint with all full sentences, not in bullet points, for the simple reason it is not I who is presenting. This is anyone who is an organizational in internal trainer. He wants to train his people. Uh, they are free to use this uh, PowerPoint. Uh, there's no this thing that... Uh, but if you are going to use my PowerPoint, please give a credit to ABK Odias Dosokai for this presentation that you are going to uh, use in part or in full. That's why the sentences are all in full, not just in bullet point. So you can understand my thinking, what has gone behind preparing this. Now, the industrial practice of five years can be compared to Mario Kondo's idea keeping only things that spark joy and saying thank you to the ones you let go at the Japanese homes. And that's what you see is the foolish bird, cluttered nest, uh, and a cluttered workplace is like a nest of a foolish, foolish bird. Now look at this workplace. It's a five years implemented workplace. Now, so far, the common negative uh, responses that we have received when we try to talk about 5S, uh, that's, that's only a reflection of the mindsets that is there working against your accepting good things. When we talk about 5S, we heard people saying, oh, 5S? Oh, you already know it. Oh, no, no, this is the organizational burden that we are going to take. Uh, we are already too busy with uh, activities. We have to complete our product on time. We have a delivery schedule. And there have been new changes, all that. So, we have to still do it. I mean, I worked with the Japanese for uh, uh, 26 years in the IT. Uh, I was heading marketing, then operations in Japan as a vice president of a big software company called Fiverr, a DSK software. Uh, then I had my own software company working with the Japanese, not only twice, uh, not only once, but twice. Now, you always know working with the Japanese, I always jocularly tell my boys, uh, with Japanese, everything can change, but only two things will not change. One, the delivery date will not change, and the original budget will not change. Everything will be pushed into it and be ready. So we used to keep beds in the office for people to sleep, get up, brush their teeth, and sit in front of the thing and go to the corner tea shop, have tea, and come back and work. Now, there are also people who say, why clean it? It will again get you dirty. And India is a place where you collect a lot of dust. And we cannot change the existing setup. Nothing works here. In another way, they look at their own organization to 
give us an excuse for not implementing 5S. We have more work pressure, no time for all these things. They are now comfortable, why change? They don't want to come out of their comfort zone. Okay, How much it will cost? I do not know whether a company will be interested if it costs. You know, whether a company will get interested or not. Is first The first step Okay, uh, is the pujari. We say God may also accept your prayers and give you benefits. But the priest who is there, he has to first accept. So these are the priests who are there. If they don't accept the company's budget could be one of the uh, excuses they may give. But a winning company which has understood and practiced 5S, they say it's a good expensive workplace has been saved. Time for locating what is needed at the time when it is needed. So time for locating or the waste of time is reduced. Mission breakdowns and shop floor accidents are reduced. Work efficiency is definitely improved and it's because of the organized work days. Achieve remarkable cost reduction in production process and improves productivity by 20%. And they attribute all this because of good 5S practices in their companies. Now, what is 5S? In people, if I have to say, 5S, 5 steps for improvement. Uh, we know what is improvement, but that's what we say, Kai said. Every, every new employee who joins has to think. Toyota has got a board. When you are here, think. We don't pay you for coming to the office on your legs and work with your hands, but you are paid for thinking. It's very important that you have to think for continuous improvement in an organization. That's a Kaizen. And five steps under the 5S are for improvement or applying Kaizen in your own organization. In this presentation, I'll use only 5S as pronounced by Japanese and no English words. I found writing 5S in English, for example, shine, sort, all these things, I mean, uh, they, they don't really reflect the thinking of the Japanese or what is to be done at the workplace. In, in Japan, if you see, Japanese use three different types of uh, uh, writing. Uh, there are two alphabets and one Chinese character. You can see that the kanji, that's a Chinese character. Hiragana and katakana are two alphabets. Hiragana is to write native Japanese words. Katakana is for writing the borrowed words in Japanese from other uh, la languages. So you, you're looking at the way it has been written, you can understand whether it is a uh, kokugo, let's say it's a native word or uh, come from one that's come from outside. The fourth simple way, easy to use way, is Romanized way of writing English alphabets as they are pronounced by Japanese people. For example, Nippon is a uh, name of uh, Japan. Nippon, N-I-P-P-O-N. So Nippon is written in English, but it's a Japanese word. Seiri is S-E-I-C-R-I-R-I. -E. So we'll be using no sort and shine and all that thing, which do not really reflect the Japanese thinking. So if you have been under some trainers who have been doing it, I think you have to retune yourself. Uh, nothing is too late in life to retune. The five is written using five Japanese words written in Romanized way as per the Japanese pronunciation of these words. Try to use some English words starting with S because they all want to stick to the acting gear for introducing five S does not reflect Japanese thinking. And there are other people who go even one step beyond and say, oh, we are, we are doing in my company six S, safety, seven S, something else. So they can go even up to 10 S to 100 S. But do they really reflect the Japanese thinking. So, if you want to improve your safety in your company, write it as safety. Why do you want to call it a success? I don't understand this approach of calling things a success, seven as and all that. Now, a cluttered atmosphere, either at home or at workplace, makes it difficult anyone to find what she or he wants. Now, we, do you know that nearly 75% of our time spent working with uh, uh, paper-based information, paper-based information is wasted in searching and filing. Now, similarly, they say 50% or more is spent 
in critical objects which you are using on the production process because you are wasting your time in locating things. You look at this cartoon given below. This scenario is very common and then uh, where uh, this scenario reflects, we are not getting what one wants at a time when he wants. That is where uh, we have been spending our productive time only in searching which is waste. Okay. Now, another uh, common scenario is by the time we find what we are searching for, we may end up buying one more new one. So we have two. Okay. Search is a wasteful activity. We all do day in and day out at home, at office or even at the gemba, your workplace. Now, Sagasu is a name in Japanese for search. Actually, uh, according to my teacher, our teacher, Mr. Fujita, he used to say, Sagasu is a Japanese word again starting with S. Sagasu, like Seiri, Seiton, it's all the Sagasu. That is the zero S from where all the five S's start. Japanese have a word for searching things where they spend more than 75% of productive time, which is a muda or a waste. We all know what is muda. Many of us have heard of along with 5S, 3M muda. Okay? It is muda. It's not muda. It's not muda. It is muda. Okay? Now, the Japanese kanji is writing muda like this, which says nothing and fat horse. Oh, you can see on the right hand side, uh, Japanese has, which is short, fat and uh, uh, short legs. In the Middle Ages, horses were of vital importance to forests. Now, before uh, uh, the guns and cannons were introduced from the West into Japan, most of them were fighting their wars with uh, swords, uh, riding on the horses or walking forces. The horse is very important for the Japanese uh, for those uh, fighters. And uh, the horse should be fit and strong. The worst thing one could have is a fat horse. This cannot, you cannot use a fat horse. And uh, yet you must care for it, which is a muda. So, muda, a word for searching is sagasu, is in Japanese, and it is a muda. And that's why my teacher Fujita says, there's actually, that is a zero of the S, starting from where all the five S start. Now, what is muda? Simple terms. Anything other than the minimum amount of equipment, material, space and worker's time, which are absolutely essential, add value to the product, and the product is not made for you, for your company, you are making it for a customer, who has wanted the people to go on, into tremendous amount of efforts to make the design. So you look at the, the whole lot of them. So that is uh, Muda. This is what uh, Muda is defined by Toyota San, founder of Toyota. Now, we search. Where do we search? Please ask the question. What is needed is normally mixed up with what is not needed. Now, retrieval is a problem linked to the way you store. Location indicators are not there. So if there is a new employee who has to be uh, ordered to bring things, he, he spends his time locating. Dirt and dust cover up uh, things. We just take things in and out, but we don't return them to the original place. So that's why they also say uh, they have a shadow of uh, the tools that you are going to take. So, you know, you have to take the, the tool, return it back to where the tool shadow is there on the board. Even if we removed what is not needed, our search for things may still continue because our own memory issues are also there. These are the reasons why we search. Now, the acronym of 5S and the definition, if you see, 5S stands for five Japanese words. The first five letters of the five Japanese words are when written in Romaji, Romanized English, they are starting with a yes. That's why this is called 5S for people to understand. Now you can see a number of uh, English words representing them. Actually, Seiri is clearing, Seiton is organizing, Seiso is cleaning and inspection, Seiki is standardizing, Shitsuke is self-discipline and are second nature. Now, uh, Shitsuke, somebody says it's sustain. Okay? Because there are people who are asking whether how do you sustain? So, please understand, uh, I am not an advocate of using English words for the 5S. And if you can see, 
the sagasu is also starting with another if written in romaji with an s so sagasu is the zero s from all the five s is emanating now ability of five s you have got five different seiri seiri is to distinguish between what is needed and what is not needed to remove what is not needed from the workplace that's the gamba seiton is to reach and pick up what is needed when you need it quickly and easily that is the objective of uh, seiton to return it to the right original place once your purpose is served to keep workplace neat and tidy by removing rubbish dust dirt to keep machinery good working condition it is not just shining but you have to inspect the workplace you have to inspect the machinery you are using and you develop uh, eye for cleaning you develop an eye for dust you develop an eye for uh, things that are not okay so that's an inspection that uh, integral part of seizo say kids to repeat seizo 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 according to your predetermined schedule you and the schedule and improve the workplace environment maintain in a good condition all time and this predetermined schedule will definitely be changing because there is nothing permanent okay if your customer asks for a, a different product and then the line gets changed the material you need is changed you say your standards may also need to undergo a change okay so say kids is uh, make sure the first three assess are done according to predetermined schedule when you change schedules because uh, life is full of uh, continuous improvement as a matter of it any fresh employee who joins a japanese company is asked to first decide okay how do he first he has to say what is my objective and then uh, how is he going to build a network and uh, how is he going to improve what he is currently seeing in the company where he is working and every time he has to make a report every month in all the three areas what did he achieve so the continuous improvement kaizen is do we all talk about kind please understand it is also doubt tail into your five s activity but when you are going to see whether somebody has uh, uh, done any of the yes all right don't get uh, carried away by the kaizen they have done kaizen is a part of seeking so or part of uh, your other activities please allow that to be done as five s in which you are also doing improvement and shitske to observe what has been decided as a second nature to train people to observe it to make an improvement at any time if it turns out to be necessary and many companies if when we do the inspection on the day of inspection okay there have been a lot of you know improvements in the area of cleaning everything they'll do pick and span but you should go un uh, announced and see what is happening as a matter of fact uh, my quality management gurus okay, who were uh, there uh, yoshio kondo and uh, uh, so uh, they used to say if you are going to a company for uh, inspection kindly make sure you also inspect the uh, workers toilet don't get carried away by what is the manager at the toilet the workers toilet is also kept as clean as the It's a company. It is not managing director who alone use of the toilet. Even employees use, and they have got every right to have a clean toilet. So that's how uh, what is being done in the company must be done in a sustained manner. That's its scale. Now, objective of five S. The primary objective of five S is to create a clean, orderly, safe work environment, an environment where there is a place for everything. and everything is in its place privacy is practiced because it exposes some of the most visible examples of waste helps in continuous improvement initiative kaizen five is a starting point of thinking to eliminate waste muda and matta nai and improve the process now uh, you may come across the two words muda and matta nai they may be overlapping muda is uh, this is a good example that i took Uh, the spirit of motanai in lean by harish notebook i would like to thank harish notebook for this muda is storing rotten food in a refrigerator there is no value or use 
Makkah night throwing away food, it is still good. There is still some use there, but before that, if you throw it, it's Makkah night. It's, it's a crime. It's unacceptable like that. I I learned what is Mutanai from an eight year small girl who was mentally challenged. Uh, during one of my visits to Japan, I went to a, a mentally retarded children home along with my friend Mr. Miyahara uh, from a place in uh, uh, Kyushu Island called Sagaramura. So he took me to this uh, thing. These children are all uh, left there in the home by the parents. They are normally the first children. The parents keep visiting them for some time. Then when the second boy, uh, his child is born, then the visit gets prolonged, prolonged, and then sometime afterwards, uh, they may even forget to visit the children. So the children are looking for somebody who will talk to them, hug them, and give them some uh, compassion and love. So uh, when I went there, I spoke to the children in Japanese. And uh, one of the children, a yeah, small girl, eight-year-old, uh, she came and took my hand, took me around and said, uh, uh, so She called me her uncle who has come from India. And then all the children came to me and said, Oh, actually, they won't want to uh, shake hands. Because at that time, foreigners are very few when I went in, to Japan in 1972. There are not many foreigners. There are only few. And there are only two Indian restaurants in the whole of uh, Tokyo. And then Kyushu, there's nobody. So they all wanted to feel how a foreigner's skin is. So everybody wants to say, oh, this, oh, I touched him. My children will scream and run. Everywhere, it's not only the mentally challenged children, but even the other uh, small uh, uh, nursery schools and small schools where I went. This is more or less the same. And then uh, the child told me, Uncle, you have come all the way. I want to give you a gift. So these children are all given a small piece of land where they themselves cultivate and uh, they have uh, training in how to plant uh, a sweet potato and grow it. So this child had a small place. So she has grown a small sweet potato there. So she cleaned, or she dug out the thing and pulled one a sweet potato, cleaned it in the tap water and then put it on a grill, grilled it. And then she said, uncle, please take it. So she took half, I took half. We were sitting and then enjoying. She said, my uncle is enjoying. So I was very touched because in the whole world, all that she has got, that piece of land, where she has put her efforts, everything, she has created this. She is willing to share with me that creation because I spoke to her in her language. So we both. Then the principal said, Mr. Ranga, why don't you have a lunch with the children? I said, okay, fine. So they got the Japanese uh, obento box. That's a lunch box. The lunch box has got small, small uh, squares. That's a, uh, divided by a small wooden parties. And one has got a, a fish, one has got a rice, one has got egg, which one has got chicken, like that. Different things are there. And one has got the kimchi, the urga, the, the Japanese pickles. Uh, it's normally a Korean pickle that has also been now done in uh, so the idea of that small obento box with so many compartments is there are items which is for order to take. But within that item, each one can select what he or she likes. Suppose I like eggs, I start with eggs. Somebody starts with vegetables, somebody starts with fish. So at the end of the thing, everybody eats what is there, but with a choice for them. So the team eats what is given to them as a team together eating, but within an individual choice. No, I, I was not a fish eater. So I, I don't mind the other uh, chicken and uh, mutton, but not the uh, fish. So I didn't uh, take the fish. This child next to me asked, Uncle, are you not going to eat? So it's very difficult to say no directly to anybody. The child or this thing in Japan. So we say, um, uh, uh, like that. So she said, what the night is there? So I got very surprised. I don't like fish. I don't want to eat. Why should she say Mottainai? So I asked the girl, why did you say Mottainai? She told me, you know, uncle, how many people have gone to the sea to catch this fish? How many of them brought it? They uh, boat, brought it to the shore, cleaned it, cooked it, and brought it for you to eat. And you simply say, I don't want it, or I don't like it. It means you have no respect for the effort of all these people 
who worked hard to bring this to you. Don't you have some uh, respect for the efforts? So, any waste or mottai nai is not only on things, but when you don't recognize the efforts of others who have done, thing, done something for you, that's the time you have a mottai nai. It's an unacceptable behavior that you have done. I thought, at that time when she said that, I thought I was mentally challenged, not the child. I said hurriedly, I am very sorry, my apologies, and I took that fish. So, I mean, that is motanai for somebody to understand. And motanai, if you go to an Indian wedding, there is a lavish dinner. We do not know whether somebody would eat all that. But we have to show. Oh, I have this much money, I can throw it on. And at the end of the day, when the guy, everybody eats, the guy has to pick up everything. And I have a great friend of mine, Mr. Suzuki of uh, Hiyoshi Corporation in a small uh, in, uh, village near Kyushu in a place called, uh, uh, in near uh, Kyoto, in a place called uh, Omi Achiman in Shiga Prefecture. Uh, Shiga Prefecture, you, you all would, some of you would have seen, the biggest uh, clear water lake is Biva, which is there. So they are the people who are into cleaning the, uh, I mean, uh, distributing this uh, uh, river water to the city of uh, Omiya Chiman. I mean, they are into all this um, uh, waste management, whether it is. Uh, this is a great company. Today they also have a uh, office in uh, Chennai called uh, Yoshi Corporation India. Yoshi India. Now, uh, Suzuki, their retired chairman or the past president, used to say, when you go for a dinner and then you look at what has been prepared for you and kept on the table and uh, you all enjoy what uh, you have got there. But we go and look at what has been thrown as a waste. You know, they peel the vegetable, they do this and what has been thrown outside. That is called our business. That is, he or she looks into what is being wasted. How to convert that into something that can be used by others. So that's how I say uh, there are people uh, in Japan who think they can reuse. This is not today. Even in the olden days, you know, in uh, Tokyo and other places, what we call uh, uh, during the samurai period, when uh, there are a number of different people who will go around announcing their uh, ability to repair things. And that sort of repair man, most of the things were also available in the olden Japan. Now, with that, let's enter into Seiri. What is Seiri? Okay, I'm showing you two photographs. Uh, one is full. I do not have enough space. Another one, I cannot find my things. Both are troublesome. Because the first one, you need space. And in Japan, space is a premium. You just do Now, of course, uh, with the current scenario after that, uh, there are a lot of, not office space, but a lot of houses of fallen weekend and villages you can go take houses. But whatever it is, the Japanese keep their houses very neat and clean with the small space they are living in. Okay. So, but in the office, we need to create space because it's a premium space in anywhere in the office in Tokyo. And another one is, I cannot find my things. Again, another premium, which is time. Time is essential. Every time you're wasting, you're delaying your delivery to your customer. What you're doing is your customer's time, not your time. So, and in Japan, we say, Okiyatsan, Kamisama. Customer is not king. Customer is God. So, you cannot spend God's time like that. Now, Seiri is, in simple terms, rejecting and letting go. Identifying and eliminating unnecessary items means giving up illusions and letting go the, all the possibilities. An example of getting rid of tools purchased for producing a product that is not needed in the marketplace. Before you buy anything, am I making this this product? Uh, how much it is needed in the market? Thinking uh, about the market is very important in anybody in production. It also means giving up on failures. An example of getting rid of parts left over from a project that have failed miserably. Seri means denying the possibility we might need that someday and accepting that 
we don't really need it. We won't need it, but still we accumulate. I used to be in Madras Fortress, and uh, I was uh, also in the I was heading the uh, design office uh, a few years, and then we had the administrative uh, wing attached to me, and then I had administrative manager. When uh, we retired, and then when he, uh, we all gave a farewell, and then when he thought there were so many copies of almost all the circulars, everything stored up in his cupboard. Then we asked, why, what's this? He said, when we go for a photocopy or anything, they please kindly bring me one copy, I also need. So he has been accumulating copies after copies in his place because he thinks someday he will need it. That someday I will need it is one of the reasons why you get accumulated with all unwanted things, making your Seiri job very difficult. Now, we say Seiri is an art of throwing away. It is not an art of keeping, but it's an art of throwing away. And then, the origin of Seiri, uh, the word goes back at least 2,500 years to the Chinese Confucian philosophers. Re or wa in Japanese pronunciation is harmony. In Japan, wa is harmony, order and morality. It is opposite to muri or non-ri, wasted labor, unreasonableness. To know what is necessary, the purpose of the activity on the hand must be clearly identified. So I used to have a friend. Uh, he was uh, my client's project manager. He used to come many times to visit our project. His name is uh, Mr. Key. Kisan will always ask my project managers, my leader, what is one plus one? So we all know what is one plus one, two. But the moment he asks one plus one, they think, oh, he is asking one plus one. So there was something in this. So somebody will say eleven. They'll even go and step further and say one, one, one. So you can have so many ones say Lord. And somebody will only say two. When somebody says two, they say, why two? Why not three? Then uh, the guy who says two, he is going to think, why is that he is asking? Then Mr. Ree, uh, my, my friend Key used to say, all of us accept what is being taught to us, what is being given to us. In the school days, we are all told one plus one is equal to two. We never ask why one plus one is equal to two. We don't develop the mind of asking why. And if you are going to be a successful person, you are doing an activity, you should know the why of it. Many times when I do a, when my company did a project for the Japanese clients, the, we used to ask the Japanese project manager to come in person or uh, explain to them over the thing, why this project and what is that activity that is expected out of the company and what is that a boy should do. This is something that the purpose of why you are doing, if it is not understood, the why of it is not known. And you're going to go all over the place. Then that's where the Japanese Buddhist thought comes into play. Keeping in mind, do what you're doing and do not do what you're not doing. Provide the basis for Seiri activity. This coming to terms with now and eliminating what is not now. Now, if you look at Seiri is written in Kanji, you see two Chinese characters and Seiri is written in uh, you see hiragana, that is the Japanese, uh, native Japanese word. And so, it is the meaning, is starting, arrangement, organization, putting in order, disposal. But simply, they'll say sort. Seiri is sort. I'm, I'm against it. The first kanji letters say, which is shared by both Seiri and Seiton, is a symbol for order. So many times in the school, the children are taught in Japan, both Seiri and, they, they will ask to do Seiri as well as Seiton together. Seiri and Seiton have been going together all the time because they both uh, show order as a part of their thing. Okay. And then Ri is a reason, principle, logic, harmony, order. So Seiri can be putting these two things, you know, uh, these words can mean putting to order based on some logic and disposal and we call that as clearing leading to organization, not sort. Literally, Seiri means establishing a re or harmony, uh, harmony amongst clutter. Now, objective of Seiri 
working space and time are two valuable resources. I've been insisting on that, but not realized by many, allowing space to be cluttered with both wanted and unwanted things. Leading to time wasted in searching for what we need when we need. Essential working space to be saved, getting rid of unnecessary, unused items, retaining what is needed for getting the job done. And the space and light time are both precious. But how does one decide between what is needed and what is not needed? So that's what Mary O'Connor says. Keep what gives you the spark of joy. Okay. So it is to be decided by how do you do that spark of joy in an organization where uh, there are so many people joining before you, after you, and then different jobs have been done. So, so many things have got accumulated. So how do you decide which gives you the spark of joy? What has given you the spark of joy may not give you the same spark of joy. So there must be, how do they decide is something that uh, we definitely need to know as a part of Sayri. And this is where I find many of the Indian trainers take a very easy route of deciding what is not needed. Is it to be decided subjectively as a part of whims and fancies of someone? Oh, I have rejected this because my asked me to, my boss asked me to re reject this. Or objectively, is there a process for me to accept and reject? There is a red tag movement, it's a process to help you move out unnecessary items from the essential workplace, like the spark of joy in one's home, you know. Now, he is my teacher, okay. That's a time when myself and my teacher, Fujita, we both had the good black air. Uh, some three years, uh, uh, not three years, just at the end, uh, the, by the time the COVID uh, restrictions came for people to travel, that's just before that, I went to Sri Lanka where I met uh, my sensei. The sensei has also become old, I've also become old. So we took a photograph together for memory sake. That's me with uh, Fujita since maybe about five years before. And uh, and he says, there is a, the key words for this, it's a classification management, necessary and unnecessary thing, and red tag moment. For unnecessary things, we have to find the true causes. Why that item has been sitting with you for so long? Uh, and uh, what can be done with that? Now, this is how Jaika has uh, put this. Jaika has got a manual for five years, especially for the African nations. Uh, and so they do because if for African nations, the Jaika will be, will be seen that they're using the English word SARS, uh, whatever has been uh, written conveniently by the Americans that has been followed by many. Now, Rita. Equipment, material, tool, files, furniture, etc. can be categorized based on frequency of use. How do we decide? Now, we'll do. Okay. Now, the red tag is done in such a way to give you an idea to identify what is not needed first. And we may need it and we definitely need it. There are two, even when you say, I need it. So, red tag is used. We'll see the process how it is being done. Red tag is used basically to divide all the material that's lying on your workplace, cluttering, not giving you how many a workplace to work with peace of mind. Okay? And they give you two different categories. What? We'll not need it. So, if you're not needed, it may be needed by somebody else in the organization. It does not mean the organization is not there. It's like uh, the proverb it says, if a cat closes eyes, it doesn't mean the whole universe has become dark. So I don't need it, doesn't mean the others don't need it. Now, so we don't need it, so move it out. And what we needed, we have uh, one, definitely need it. And then, then two, uh, I may need it sometime. Now, how do we do? So we'll see. The item that we not we, we don't need it, that uh, put in the, the red, red tag movement, move to a separate area where uh, the 5R is applicable to that. And then items whose red tags have been removed fall between those two categories. We'll show you what is this red tag, what is it moving. You may, uh, I, I may become curious. I want to become curious on that because uh, I find many people don't talk too much about red tag, but I want to 
uh, what you understand there is some very interesting uh, thing behind it and then storing place is decided the seiton is decided rules based on this frequency of use that's very important how do we decide on the frequency of use even within the items that may you need if you look at this the red tag movement okay if you look at this picture you can see a lot of red tag all over the place the japanese way of red tag at the beginning of each month or you can say each quarter whatever the thing i'm just giving you an example uh, you are the best judge for your own red place put a red tag on every item with a time limit of one month if you say okay I, i'm taking a red tag for three months you can say at the end of three months will be my time limit and then during that month or the time limit whatever is your time limit remove the red tag when an item is used when you take an item for used to be used remove the red tag so at the end of the period that you have you have, you have put a uh, uh, decided period at the end of the period if you look at your workplace there are items no red tag there are items with red tag now item with the red tag has not been used by you even once then the question comes why are they lying here what is the cost for them to be here and then when it was bought all those things will come and then, so check whether the item with the red tag should occupy the place where it is currently lying or can be moved elsewhere still accessible depending on the needs of the work or to a designated red tag area for such items now this is a, a very funny cartoon i saw in an american magazine or american website there Uh, one guy says, "I have two computers. It's a violation of the company Fiverr's rules of standardized workspace. I need two computers to test my software. There is no way to do my job with only one." The manager, somebody says, "I have a compromise solution. Put this little red tag on one of them and tell me later if anything bad happens." So one is still under red tag, so you can use both the computers. That's a, a, a American way of looking at. Uh, Fiverr and Sadie. The things whose red tags still remaining, as do not, uh, they don't seem to be in use even once within the prescribed period. Move them to a separate area called the red tag area for others in the organization to visit, see, and pick up what can be used by them in their place of work. The tag gets filled with all relevant details of the item, a specific period at the time. Red tag is available in the red tag area. You again for a specific period is available in the company wide reuse. People are asked, okay, I have got this material in the red tag. These are the details of this. This is the red tag area of my agency. Visit before this date, and if you want to use it, reuse it or repair it and use it. What do you want? You can pick it up and then uh, inform me. I will remove from the list, and then. it is available for company wide reuse recirculation as intimated to all by the group and also after the specific period a process approval to get rid of remaining things okay uh, i was uh, doing some fibers for a small school in chennai i mean it's a big school but uh, uh, and then i found the principal room lot of papers been stored on top of every bureau they say as what is all this thing You know, the students mark list and uh, earlier uh, paper i said why should they be there uh, because we are she said we are not the, uh, still digitizing all this but at least for 5 years if there is a complaint i may be asked to bring it out no there are rules like that which tie up uh, hands of people i went to my own uh, college uh, engineering college and then i went to one of the uh, building rooftop Was amazed to see uh, all the old furniture thrown there uh, to be the thing. But nobody knows how to get rid of that. It's being a government college, there are a lot more process than a private institution. And then the corridors, which at my time uh, was very free for us to even run in the corridor, but today corridors are filled up with the furniture, which are old and. Uh, nobody knows what to do with it the problem is authority to get rid of this furniture is not available and everybody says okay we are in a government college it's fine we can do that so uh, red tag as a system is introduced but still 
the idea of this must get into people's mind is what I'm saying. Okay? Now, uh, Richard method is only objective way of finding the reason for workplace clutter. It's an objective way. I want to emphasize on the objective way, not subjective way belonging to the whims and fancies of anybody, even including your boss, causing you to waste time in searching for things and identifying things that are not needed at workplace, which cause waste of precious organization resources like time and space. Again, and I am I'm calling the two things as the major things you should get rid of in an organization. There tend to be pigs, which are the method, a decision for taking on which are uh, on which are to be discarded. Discarded red tag items are moved to a place, designated red tag area. For four hours, reuse, recycle, repair, and recover. If not into the four R, then the item goes to the fifth R, the reject. So, uh, a red tag area, when you put a red tag, it has got all the details there. People decide, okay, I need it, I don't need it. Okay, within the prescribed period, people have not moved anything out of it, then you are at liberty to put a note and clear it out of your organization workplace. Now, keep a log of items into red tag area. This is very important. It's not that I just send red tag area. Whatever item sent to red tag area by one group may be needed by another work group. So the items list has to be made, circulated with a time frame for inspection. Red tag area is not a dump area for items which are sent by a work group, but that can be the origin of the 4R. So place this with accessibility and visibility. Oh, I got a red tag area. But nobody even find it possible to cross the first few items and go and see the last item which he may be interested in. So, accessibility and visibility in red tag area is absolutely very essential. Now, they all say the eminent monk, uh, Renyo, picked up a scrap of paper lying in the hallway one day and said, even this scrap of paper is given to us by Buddha and must not be wasted. The Japanese idea of not being wasteful, it's not just about avoiding waste, but it's also embodied in the spirit of gratitude towards objects. People who don't respect objects and the objects don't respect the people. It's a Japanese thinking. You will see the great tennis player from uh, uh, Japan, Naomi Osaka. Sometimes when he plays and she plays a wrong shot or anything, she gets angry and throws her racket out. Then she'll go and bow before the racket, apologize to the racket and the company which has made that racket and then pick it up. And she says, okay, I made a mistake. I, I was angry through it. So, sorry, by apology. Fix it up. So, Japanese normally say, everything has got life. So, you need to be respectful to them. Otherwise, even they will not show respect to you. Rather than four hours. We may identify things that are not useful to us. Yet, we cannot store everything in a cupboard. Because we don't want to be wasteful. Oh, we don't want to waste, we'll keep. So, the, in, in my period, when I went to Japan, there was a... Interesting cartoon that is running like, uh, you know, the long, it's a long, for so many years it was running. It's a cartoon done by a housewife called Sazaya san was the name of the cartoon. Very interesting. There are, uh, uh, the cartoon full of, uh, it's, it came as a video clipping and uh, every Sunday in the television. And uh, it is to reflect on the daily life of uh, the Japanese people. So Sazaya san and the, uh, 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 brother, uh, uh, they are at home. Suddenly somebody calls and says, we are coming to your house. And uh, of course, uh, immediately there are so many things are lying around. She throws everything in the cupboard, puts the sliding doors and makes the house look uh, very clean. And then the guy comes, removes the shoe at the entrance, goes and it's a uh, tatami uh, mat room. Again, he leaves house slippers outside the tatami room. The idea is, you know, you don't bring outside dust into the house. So he leaves them there. And then uh, he leaves everything there. Bows. And straight away goes to the sliding door and removes the door. And everything what she has taken great pains to put inside, they all follow. He says, I'm sorry, I'm the guy who has come to repair your sliding door. So that's an interesting way of what sometimes people do, putting everything into the cupboard and closing. Because they don't need it at that time. So that's a mutanai when you put in the cupboard. Uh, we don't want to be wasteful because many times we put there and then we forget. 
what we have put, when we have put, and then see something despite of being little old, still have some life left into them. Elsewhere, they would also have a place to be used, place to be of use. But instead, they are not by many often forgotten what they have put inside. And then, uh, because we say everything has got life, they say they end up their life without seeing the light of the day. Be grateful for things that have served you and give them to people who could use them where they can have a purpose and see a second life again. Very interestingly, those days Sony had a... Uh, before uh, all this uh, big robots came, they had a small, small robo dog which will wag his tail and go behind the water, uh, owner or the children. And then after so many years, uh, they, they couldn't get spares and all that. So, you know, there was a big burial ceremony under a Buddhist monk. All these people who had this uh, dog. Uh, I forgot the name. It's called uh, Akio or something like that. So, they all brought all the dogs, put them there. A Buddhist monk gave the prayers and gave them a uh, fitting burial because they also had their life and served their masters. That is the way. Even today, Japan is a country of robots. Very interestingly, when robots come to a company, the Shinto priest comes there and then they have a Shinto ceremony to welcome them to the company. Okay, We, we want a lot of work to be done with Japan. At the same time, we have our own thing. There are people who think all these things is a foolish thing or not common sense. We should not. But the Japanese, with all this uh, forward going technology, still in their mind, this is something that things have got life and we need to respect them. And if you shut them and forget them, they, they, we are not giving an opportunity for them to have a second life and use it to the people. So be grateful and then uh, they have to be given a second life again. Retag is the best way to give things that served you to be useful by four hour to anyone who may need them and use them in the organization. Then why Retag? Red is the primary color and always draws attention. Red is a color for alerts and attention. Red tag is a support tool for decision making. Red also gives the information on the item, date of purchase, purchase price, original location, date line for decision making to retain or remove out of the red tag area, a temporary storage area awaiting for disposal decision. These are some examples to give you what is the red tag like. But you know, don't take them as the ideal red tag that is there. Each organization has to decide and design their own red tag, what is to be tied there. Okay. And then, a Katasuke culture. Americans do not necessarily feel that desk is covered with papers is a bad thing. There is a well-known saying, the best, saying a messy desk is a sign of a creative mind. And also a corollary. A tidy desk is a sign of a sick mind. Okay. And uh, the Western attitude to neatness is something different from getting things done. Quite opposite from the Japanese feeling. It is difficult to work productively on a messy space. You know, I went in uh, 1972 to Japan. And then I was with a uh, port construction company, Toa, Kensetsu, Toa Ko and Kensetsu. Uh, and then I had a lot of friends there. You know, because in the evening, after the work, we all get together, go for dinner together. They were comfortable with whatever little Japanese I could speak in those days. Then, after, uh, I think, about six years or seven years, again, I went for my production management program in Japan. That time, again, I visited my company. Uh, then I met my old friends. Then one guy was uh, missing the Yamazaki. So I asked my boss, yes, this guy Yamazaki, I want to meet him. So he said, I'm sorry, Yamazaki has become uh, blind in the eyes. Uh, so please, uh, he called one of the young guys, you know, you, you know, Japanese office. Again, you can feel the Seiton in the office. Because Seiton is not only for uh, things. There is a human Seiton also. They, the way they are seated in the office, everybody gets a position to step. You know where the boy is? Who is the boss? Who is the uh, old person? Who is the new guy? The new guy is the one who sits very near the door. He meets you at the door, knows what you want. Then he says, 
wait for a few minutes, he runs around. And then he's the guy who does all the errand. Sometimes um, uh, he goes and does photocopy. The seniors, you know, by way of their job, that way they're senior, anything, they are seated in rows. And then at the end of, at the end of the, uh, each two rows, you will be uh, having a, a section manager there. Now, he called one of the young guys who were there and said, take Ranga to his house. It's a friend of mine. So the boy came with me. So I was talking to him on the train. I just came to know where his house was and all that. Then I met my friend and then gave him the gift I brought from India. We were talking for some time. Then he said, uh, okay, thank you, Ranga, for visiting me. Then myself and this young man, the young boy who came to guide me there, we both were returning. And then there was a station from where I had to go to my uh, dormitory where I was staying. <clears throat> I know where the guy's house was. He was supposed to go take a train and go to the house. But I found he was taking a different train and trying to go towards office direction. So I asked the boy, what are you going? Where are you going? He said, I'm going back to the office. I said, no, there will be nobody there. By the time somebody will be there. He said, no, no, there will be people there still. But when the boss said, take Ranga, I immediately left my desk as it is. If I don't clean up my desk, if I don't reorganize my desk, if I don't clear the mess on my desk and put them in order, how can I start the work tomorrow morning? A messy desk is where Japanese do not like to start their work the next day. So, in the office, this is called Katazuke, putting things in order. Okay. The Katazuke, there is a Katazuke time as a part of Japanese culture. This has been taught to children from the school. So, when the teacher says, Katazuke, everybody stands there. They are given two, three minutes, clear up their desk, put things in order. Again, they clap, then they sit down and work. So, this Katazuke happens a few times in the school and there is a Katazuke time. Even in the office, they have a Katazuke time. Katazuke is a part of uh, Japanese culture, Japanese daily life, whether it is house or office, Katazuke, Katazuke, it's very important. So, Katazuke is the uh, cultural ingredient with their mind and the, the way of working. A book written by Clean Code, a handbook of agile software craftsmanship, even proposes applying fibers to programming, keeping lines of code, code clean, orderly and well-maintained. It's not that only in a uh, production thing, anywhere you can apply Katazuke or Pivas or whatever you are doing. Now, uh, tidying of spaces is a great way to create order at work, at home. And in your head, you need to do it. You don't do it by yourself. It can be done with a team. According to a Japanese Zen Buddhist monk, his name is Matsumoto, and he did his MBA from the University of Hyderabad. He writes a book. A self-help book called The Monk's Guide to Clean House and Mind. He says the katazuke or the mind doesn't happen only at the desk or the house. It also happens in your mind. Your mind can also be many times cluttered with things. Please clean your mind before you clean your house. And then when you talk about Seri, what is important in Seri is you've been removing what is not needed. But over a period of time or unwanted things, what are still not needed, maybe slowly creeping in into your cleared space. Or even somebody can bring a similar item what you have declared not needed. A similar item could be brought back to your site. So, we say, whether whatever you have cleared, is it clean or something has happened, whether things what are not needed, what you have cleared, have they come up into the thing, have they crept into the thing? So, we have what you call as Fixed point photography. So you decide the thing, you keep, you start taking photograph at that point periodically, looking at one from one corner, so you get a wide perspective of the space. What is once you clear your using Sari and clear the place, and periodically every month from the same place, you start taking. Then look at the pictures. Anything has happened, anything has come. So this fixed point photograph are the mirrors of your workspace. And then important points of Sari. Distinguish between what you need and what you don't need. Okay. Many times you don't need, don't even buy them. Separate important items from unimportant ones. Distinguish between frequently used items and less frequently used items. Distinguish between expensive items and inexpensive ones. 
Sadi should be carried out depending upon the situation in Gemba, which can be uh, very flexible. You should, your uh, Gemba situation can be changing. So according to changing situation, your Sadi applicability or Sadi approach can also change. Separate production parts are work in progress and from the tools. To make sure items removed by Sadi or similar items do not come into the Gemba later, that's why we have suggested fixed point photography. Action for Sadi. Place red tag for categorization items which are useful and currently and future not usable items. Identify unnecessary, unusable items only based on objective way of identifying them, not any subjective way. Move unnecessary items, broken tools, obsolete jigs and fixtures, scrap and excess raw material, etc. to red tag area for inspection, reused by others in the company. This will give you valuable floor space. Floor space is very, very important. Space utilization is achievement through your SAIDI operation and finding abnormality of equipment and tools. You know, when you try to move things, then you will say, oh, this missing part, this out of order, all that you can find. Uh, reduce search time at the gimba and the line. This also helps you. You have been searching for one thing out of many things in which both needed and unwanted needed are mixed together and they are cluttered together. Now, the moment you do SAIDI, you are only having needed items, out of which what you need, you can very easily search, your search time. So I've been telling you, the two important thing is space and time, both, okay, Seiri helps you to achieve. Of course, from Seiri you have to do Seiton again, so this will again give you a lot of time. So if uh, somebody comes and presents to me, oh, we have received, uh, we have done Seiri, we have reduced and re uh, we have got so much space, our floor area, one space is so much, multiplied by so many rupees. Don't worry, don't worry about it. Do you get the happiness of doing Seiri and then seeing you have got a very clean workplace where you can work saving space and time. That's your first achievement. Then only all the other things come. So, in any achievement, you know, you should think, uh, what is that? Does it give me the uh, joy of working at this workplace? Is the Gemba gives me happiness? It's a clean and nice workplace where I think it's very safe for me to work. That's what you have to get. And then, uh, now, if you have got unnecessary things, you should definitely find the true causes, the actions of Sadie. Okay. Thank you for your being with us today. And I will join you next week with my second uh, series. And we are going to paste, uh, post this in the YouTube for anybody to use. Okay. So feel free to use it. And uh, if this can be a some happy, uh, some use to you that will bring joy to us. Thank you. Good day to you all. Thank you.